Hey, I'm Eric Perkins and you are in for a treat today because on today's video, I am visiting the house I grew up in and we're gonna check out my stepdad's awesome woodworking shop. He is a luthier, which if you don't know, is a person who builds instruments. He's an awesome luthier actually. So we're gonna check out that wood shop, show you a little more why Jamie and I love woodworking and also look at some old pictures. Everybody loves old pictures, not really, but I'm gonna make you look at them. So stay tuned, I hope you enjoy. Hey, Bob. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> All right, we're in the shop. Let's take a look at what Bob is working on right now. Okay, this is a custom mandolin for somebody. This is the drawing I made years ago, and we're making another one. Uh, it's a custom myrtle with spruce. This is all hand carved. I start with a three quarter inch thick board mm. and it's all hand carved out to the arch inside and out. These are the rough out tools I start with. These are pole planes. They're really aggressive cut. And then for more fine details, I go to these smaller finger planes. And you can see that they're, that for scale, they're very tiny for details. That'll really wear out your finger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then from this point, I'll go to these cabinet scrapers or card scrapers they're called of different sizes and these have a rolled edge burr that you can flex and get into the corners. So I remember coming out here and you'd be tapping on a piece of wood and listening oh, to yeah. it to we make sure it was that. ringing just like it should. Can you yeah, do an example yeah, of that yeah. for us? Let's see, we'll try this mandolin tap. So you have to hold it just right because there it sounds pretty dead. But if I hold the node point, it'll come alive. Oh, I hear it. So he would do this and then like shave a little more, tap again, <laughs> shave a little more, tap That's again, right. until and the wood tuned. sounded just right. We got a winner. <laughs> that one's gonna be a guitar for sure. Here's a guitar in the making. <laughs> Here's a larger size carved instrument going on the back of an arch top guitar, which is very pretty. What kind of wood is that? It's curly maple. Yeah, that's awesome. So we had go-karts growing up and we would work on our go-karts right outside the garage door here. We'd get oil all over ourselves and then come in here grabbing for tools and Bob would be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Do not touch anything with oil on your hands because wood soaks up oil and it would totally ruin one of these instruments yeah, but... if he grabbed the tool that was covered in oil and then touched the wood on the instrument. So to this day, I'm terrified to get oil on myself and touch anything. Well, and the other one was uh, always put the tools back exactly where you found them. So, cause I have a automatic reflex to reach for it wherever it was. And if well, it's not there, I knew who did it. You know, I hate to say this, but now that I've got kids, I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. I go to my toolbox and I'm like, where's my tools? Where's my wrench? Where's my screwdriver? They're all gone. And yeah. like every time yeah. I need them, they're yeah. gone. Yeah. You hear that kids? <laughs> put the tools back. All along, the kids would come out here at an early age and want to play in the shop, and I was pretty finicky about what I'd let them play with. But uh, Jamie was the one that had the patience. He would come out here and he would take a piece of sandpaper and sand a piece of wood into nothing but sawdust, not even caring if he made anything or not. And then Eric, I didn't think, was paying much attention, and then all of a sudden he says, I want to build a project, and he'd show, show up and sure enough, build the project. <laughs> Yeah, Jamie was in middle school. He decided he wanted to build a guitar. So he came out and picked all of my scraps and made a little baby ukulele. He still has it and it still plays. All right, here I'm looking at all the templates for neck designs and this is what he'll lay on a solid stock of wood and trace to cut out all these different instruments. There's probably like 10 right here. But he's already got the angles figured out and the sizes to cut when he cuts it out of rough stock. So up here we have templates for the pit guards, headstocks, and tail pieces and there's probably a dozen of each of these for each kind of different instrument he makes all right these are all the templates for the body shapes with cutouts for all the bracing so this is like math and art combined to get the most sound out of these different kinds of wood 
go through and check out all the different body shapes and sizes and bracing that's going to go in each one of these instruments. Pretty incredible. This is an asymmetrical instrument, so I did a full version of it, which it doesn't matter because you don't have to match both sides. But most of my instruments are symmetrical, so you have to match both sides. You can't draw exact mirror image, so you do a half and just flip it. One of the first projects I remember out here was you letting me turn something on the lathe. And I remember you telling me over and over, do not lift the chisel off the rest or else it will do that and it'll fly <laughs> off and hit me in the face. And yeah. uh, I was probably really young. I'm, I'm imagining teaching my own kids at that age. And I imagine it was very frustrating. No, 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 <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, I, I love teaching kids and, and the kids are the ones that are enthusiastic about it. Uh, you know, I mean, with Chase, how old was he when I had him out here? He's learning. Chase is my son, by the way. He's, he's, 10. Learn, he's learning all the tools, and he was in here probably when he was seven or eight. Yeah. Using all the power tools, yeah. just with very strict supervision. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, a wide arm caliper that I made so I can actually tell what the thicknesses of my plates are as I carve them. And That's cool. See the progression in thousands of inches. And these. I use these a lot too when I'm uh, actually thicknessing my, sanding my flat top instruments so I can use. And what's weird is I've, I've learned, I was never very good at math, but what I learned was uh, I use millimeters, thousands of inches and inches. And uh, for some reason I have not fixed in on any one thing. I use them all. <laughs> Here's a look at the different calipers Bob's had over the years, starting right here with the 1977 model, the very first one that you actually had to read the numbers, super small. Uh, this one came with a little analog dial so you could read it a little easier. And then finally, we're up in the digital age, got a digital caliper, tells you the exact number on the screen. No guesswork and you can see it nice and easy. Because you do have glasses nowadays. You didn't <laughs> used to have glasses. <laughs> right, <laughs> going blind. And if you're really going blind, just get a set of these. It'll magnify like times 10. <laughs> Oh my gosh. That's what I do my inlay on. Yeah, you can see super close, yeah. but not far away at all. Right, no. that's why I use for my inlay. So this is pretty cool. Some of the designing in one of these fretboards that he did, where he inlaid a whole scene into the fretboard. Here's the plan and the routed out fretboard and then the finished product with this little mother of pearl inlay, super tiny, super delicate, going all the way down the neck. All right, what we have here is really cool. It's called a go bar deck and it's an Egyptian designed clamp. Instead of using a C clamp, you can just stick a stick in from top to bottom and it will wedge whatever you're working on nice and tight till the glue dries. Now on this particular deck that he's using, it's actually scalloped out at the same radius that the back of this guitar is gonna be scalloped out in the finish, which is an 18 foot radius. He also has like a 10 foot and a 20 foot and all the different radiuses so that any guitar he builds, he has the correct radius while it's getting glued and dried. So the beauty of this is before I used to use uh, C-clamps and heavy things that were on this fragile wood, this allows me to put all these go bars in and I can brace every brace at the same time and I can get in and clean up all the glue. There's, I'm not having to get around all those C-clamps, so everything is much faster, cleaner, and easier. All right, let me point you guys towards some of Jamie's handiwork right here. When he was about six years old, he made this handle to the bathroom, which is not even a bathroom anymore, on the lathe over here, and it's still in use today. Good quality. <laughs> All right, so Bob will actually start with some of these huge pieces of wood right here, rip them down, cut them, glue them up, and then magically them into small. <laughs> <laughs> it turns into a guitar neck that kind of looks like a guitar neck. It's still a little square, and he will hand shape that down to something finished that will look like something like this that actually fits your hand and is nice and smooth. So that's pretty incredible to go from that giant stock of wood to a nice finished guitar, and it's a lot of work. Well, that's a pretty good tour of the shop. It was a really cool place to hang out as a kid, and it's not a huge shop, but Bob has got everything you could ever need to build an instrument in here, which is awesome. So we loved hanging out here as kids, and it's still pretty cool to come back and build stuff now that we're older, and we can actually do stuff without screwing stuff up. So. Thanks for the tour. Oh, well, thank you. We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get mom in the video. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks for coming. See ya. <laughs>